Hi, welcome to Art by Anna Marie. Today I wanted to share with you how to paint a watercolour bumblebee. We get to start today with purple. I'm really excited about that because it's my favourite watercolour colour to work with. It's great for background, for shade and for adding detail and depth. We're starting with the background today because I have found that with black images, like the bumblebee, which has a lot of black in it, when you add the background last, the black inevitably bleeds into the background. Add some green to your background. Using the wet on wet technique that we've learnt in other lessons, I like to mix my own green using a variety of greens, yellows, blues, purple and red. It sounds complicated but it's really effective and it's easy. I'll put a link now to an excellent lesson about mixing your own green that I've already made. The painting must be dry before you start your bee. Start with the yellow and apply it loosely by dabbing it. Pretend it's some cotton wool and you're just trying to swab the paper. You'll need the yellow to be fully dry before adding black so go ahead and add some more purple detail to the flowers in the foreground. Introducing the black. When starting with the black, make sure you dilute it and do just a few layers. This will make your bee more fluffy. With the brush on the side, spread the pigment into the black segments of the bee's body. Avoid the legs at this stage. That's so you can have a tiny bit more definition when you do the legs later. This lesson is sped up, but if you want the real-time version along with step-by-step -step commentary and advice, then click over to my Patreon page. You'll find the link in the description below. While the black layers of the bee are drying, add an extra layer of color and texture to the flowers. This is optional and you can keep them as loose as you like. The more detail you put in them brings them to the front and removes them from the background.
And finally, the wings. I'm not gonna lie, the wings were tricky. I guess because you don't really see them in the photo that I was using, so I kind of had to make up the proportion. I don't know if you caught it here, but I got the proportion wrong at first and made the far away wing too small. So then I measured with the body to try and adjust it. The wing closest was easier. I calculated the wing would fold back onto the body when it wasn't flying, so that helped me work out how long it should be. Use a light blue or light grey for the wing to keep them transparent. You can add some glimmer watercolour if you have it. Also add in white gouache where the wings hit the body to help them appear more three-dimensional. White gouache is great for finishing touches, but it's also important to know when to stop. Sometimes I could just go ahead and fuss like this for ages. I'm particularly happy with the watercolour application of the black with the yellow and how there's a good amount of definition without there being a really harsh line. The painting as a whole really came together and it feels really natural with the background. I'm so happy with how this turned out. It's actually my first bumblebee, so I was quite happy with it. It's definitely something that I want to continue to practice. Leave me a comment below and let me know if you prefer practicing bumblebees or flowers, which one you actually prefer. I think this one's great because it combines both. If you are on Facebook, please check out Art by Anna Marie on Facebook and leave me a picture of your bumblebee if you do give this tutorial a go. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.